pleasant day everyone by the way our topic this morning today is about chemical reactions so what i had done is because this is a very long topic i had it into two parts so this is chemical reaction one now then this will be followed by the next recording which is about chemical reaction two okay so what is chemical reaction one if we already know that a compound will be formed if and when there is a chemical reaction okay so an element forms with another element or an element forms with another compound or a compound forms with another react with another compound to form a compound two different compounds and many more no so two or more compounds so that is the process of chemical reaction so as a start let us have the course outline the lecture outline of course we are going to discuss what is chemical reaction chemical reaction will no, will be will be processed when there is a reactant and it will form into a product no? so what is a combustion analysis here in the chemical reaction we will look into the five types of chemical reaction so we will calculate also the balanced chemical equation Okay, so last time we had discussed about stoichiometry or stoichiometry, in which case what will happen is we are going to no, apply now, how are you going to compute a compound present in a chemical reaction? Okay, then we will also describe which will be the limiting reactant. Then we will look into its periodic trends in the reactivity in the main group elements. Main group elements is the 1A, 2A, like that. Then we will look into the properties of the aqueous solution. What do you mean by aqueous solution? It's not a liquid, it's not it's not a liquid alone, it's not a solid alone, it is in between that is aqueous solution. When a solid added with no added with a liquid and it will form an aqueous solution. What do you mean by precipitation? No? The term there, precipitation in the common language is nilugdang. Okay. Then what is an acid-base reaction? How are you going to form when an acid, acid reacts with a base? What will happen? No? Then we will also look into the combustion analysis. Combustion analysis will only be possible if there is a presence of oxygen. Then we will have the oxidation reduction reaction. And the last one is the aqueous reaction and chemical reaction. That is why this is a quite long coverage in the chemical reaction. So what do you mean by chemical equation? So in order to express no, what happened in the chemical reaction, we will be using an equation, no? an equation in a form that we could apply in the chemistry. How it is being applied, of course, the, the, we have a compound, uh, the name. We had it last time, the naming of the compound. So that is it. No? It's the element added with a compound, element plus element. No? So an expression there, what will, what will be formed is a product. Okay, and that kind of an, an expression is known as chemical equation. No? So a chemical equation is a shorthand notation to describe chemical reaction, what will happen in the chemical reaction. So just like chemical formula, a chemical equation expresses quantitative relationship. So how will you know there will be a quantitative relationship? Of course, when a product, when a reactant, when an element combines with another element, how will you know? How are you going to express it? Added, meaning there will be plus. No? And it will produce. It will produce, you will have an arrow. So that arrow there pertains that your no, reactant proceed to form in order to have a product. So there is that plus. That plus there meaning added the arrow there if it goes to that portion meaning it proceed to 
the product when it will be reverse what will happen reverse if it will go back to the original an arrow goes back also so that is a chemical equation it is the expression we're in no you can see how the element combines with another element a compound compound uh, combines with another compound to form a product so we have this expresses quantitative relationship no? that is the chemical equation we have a subscript what do you mean by subscript this tells the number of atom of each element in a molecule no? so for instance you have here this is methane methane has a formula of ch4 this subscript here you will see that there is one atom of carbon it is not being signified already because no need to place one there there are four atoms of hydrogen that is a subscript now then we have o2 there are two molecules uh, two atoms of na two atoms of oxygen okay so how about coefficient this tells the number of molecules if you talk about subscript meaning this is the number of atoms in each of the element in a given compound now so that's the difference there if you talk about coefficient is the whole part of the molecule for instance this is methane ch4 or carbon now this is carbon tetrahydride okay but this is methane in organic chemistry so how many molecules how will you know it's over here it's the total of the compound there is one molecule of methane or there is one molecule of carbon tetrahydride there is two molecules of na, oxygen na, atom there is uh, there is one molecule of carbon dioxide there are two molecules of water okay so that is what is meant by subscript and coefficient the coefficient is before the atom na, uh, before the molecule and mean the subscript is the number of atoms in each given element okay so changing coefficient changes the amount also if we have one here there's one molecule of water but if you are going to have there two meaning it will be two molecules of water now but changing the subscript this will now change this in changing the coefficient it will not change now the it will not change the molecule, na? the given molecule. What will change is the number of molecules. Na? But here in the subscript, it will be different. H2O2 is known as hydrogen peroxide. It's no longer water. Na? So changing the subscript, this will change the properties of your compound. Okay. So as I have said, this is the reactant when methane added with oxygen okay that is methane plus okay so that's plus okay oxygen you will form so there will be an arrow no so if heat is added you will know later on if heat is added there is no there is a delta there is a triangle below your arrow that triangle means heat is being added okay so this is the reactant and this is the product how will you know there is a product of course as i said if there is an arrow pointing to the no, after the two added reactant okay so how are we going to balance the chemical equation now so in writing now in balancing chemical equation what happened is there is there is a rule you could never no you could never so what is already given in the reaction you are not allowed to change the subscript huh but you can change the coefficient in order to balance the number of elements in each of the given compound i repeat you are not allowed to change the coefficient no the coefficient coefficient in each of the element in a given compound what is allowed is only changing the the coefficient i mean you can change not the subscript 
no? subscript is dili di ba kung ang subscript imong utrohon this will na no, change the ident identity or the composition of your compound okay so add to efficient so that number for instance we have h2cl2 no Take a look. Let us examine first our reactant. How many atoms of hydrogen? There are two. How many atoms of chlorine? There are two. Therefore, you will have HCl. Mga nung HCl mana siya. Okay. You look into the oxidation number. Na? So H, what is the oxidation number of HH plus? Chlorine Cl negative. Okay, di ba crisscross? Okay, so 1-1 one, one naman na siya. Mawa na ng positive o negative. Therefore, 1-1, one, one, no? the, uh, the oxidation number of your element in the first will be the number of atoms in your second element. The oxidation number of your second element will be the number of atoms in your or the subscript in your first element okay that's crisscross okay so h plus one cl negative one so it's only one one therefore h1 cl1 okay so that is it no? so that is how we are going to know the pwedeng i to manisha pung largo na lang natong h2 cl to dili pwede na siya that is not your basis here is the oxidation number of each of the element, or even it's a polyatomic, that is it. Okay, that is H1Cl1. As you look into here, how many atoms of hydrogen? Mam nga nung H2Cl2. These are the only elements which are diatomic in form. Pila na sila kabuk seven. That is hydrogen, na hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen. Remember, huh? Hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, chlorine, bromine, iodine, fluorine. Seven na sila nga. Once you have that as a starting point in a form of element, element na siya, it is diatomic too. The rest of the element, for instance, Hg1 na siya, Na1 na siya. Okay. Therefore, in order to... That is seven, huh? diatomic. So in order to balance the equation, what happened is you have, in the reactant, you have two atoms of hydrogen, two atoms of chlorine. So you add two in the coefficient. As I have said, you are not allowed to change the subscript. You could not place their H to Cl to no. What you can add is only the coefficient. So now the equation is balanced. That is two times one for hydrogen, there are two atoms of hydrogen, two times one for chlorine, there are two atoms of chlorine. That's, that is what is meant by that. So at the state, but in most cases, no, we're not so strict with the state. State kay unsa siya, solid ba siya, liquid. Na? So hydrogen is in a form of gas, then chlorine is in a form of gas, then HCl, hydrogen chloride, is in a form of aqueous. But in most cases, we are not that strict na? because not all of us knows what is the state of the reactant or the product. So the equation now is balanced. So this is how to balance a chemical equation. So sample problem. Okay, so here are here we are. Good for this because there is already a given product. So Actually, in balancing of equation, we have the trial and error method. We don't have the redox later in that Trial and error is you, you just look into the number of atoms in the product and in the reactant. No? So all you have to do is just have, that is what trial, trial and error is, you will just give the lowest, no? lowest coefficient no? that is possible. So if you look into this, one way to, no, this is one of the secret. Okay, secret. No. Take a look. How many atoms of iron here? Two. Ngani apila mangani ang oxygen? Three. Pero ngani sa product, a reactant, we have two. The product here is three. To make it balance, you just crisscross. Kaning three mo i add ni mga ni ah. So there are three times two, six. Na, kaning two mo i-add ni mga ni a. Therefore, that is two times two for fluorine. So your, uh, your iron, I mean, there will be four atoms of iron here for your coefficient. Then two times three, six. 
So your oxygen now in the product is six. Your oxygen in the reactant is six. Asa na ko tagiko ha? Here, kaning, kaning. Ang oxygen. Tanaw ni mo ang, no, katong unbalance. You look into the unbalance nga na a siya sa product. Na? So take a look. Two. And this is three. So that is add two here, add three here. Okay. To make the equation balance. Now, this one is combustion. Letter B is combustion. What do you mean by combustion? Later on, you will have no, you will have now the different types of chemical equation. Okay. No? So how are you going to balance this? There is again a clue. Here, no. If it is combustion, there are only two products here. That is carbon. Remember that one, It's carbon dioxide and water. Okay. How to balance this? This will be our. Kani ang inyong tanaw, imong tanaw. This is methane. How many atoms of carbon two? So you add two here. How many atoms of hydrogen four? How many here two? So you add two here. So let us see if this is two, yeah, two times one, it's two. Therefore, our carbon is two. Kung yan ang oxygen, ilas ninyo na. Then, hydrogen, you have no? two times two, four. Okay, so you add now your oxygen. So, that, diba? It's two times two for hydrogen. There are four, uh, for oxygen, there are four atoms of oxygen here. Here, you have two times two. Two times one, it's two. So two plus, na? two plus four, it's six. So you add here to make it six, you add three. The equation now is balanced. You read? Did you get it? Okay. You look into the unbalanced. First thing that you are going to do is look into the unbalanced, okay, element in the reactant or in the, in the reactant or in the product. Third, no? asa may unbalanced animam? Tanawa. Ang chlorine is three. Na? No? Pero kung butaga, butangan ni mo ni three, what will happen? Your hydrogen will be three. Two mani siya. Na? So make it into a whole number. Okay. So how about if you are going to multiply this with two? Okay, therefore your aluminum is two, so you add two here. Your chlorine is two times three, six. Na? So you add here six. Therefore, that is six and hydrogen, six and chlorine. Therefore, what will be your coefficient here? It's three. Three times two, it's now six. The equation is balanced. So at least I have given you how to do the trial and error or the other way which is being termed in this kind of balancing of equation is inspection. Ginspect ra ni mo. Oh, tapos, naging mo trial and error. Uh, okay, that is in the balancing of chemical equation. Okay, nara siya ang mga answers. Okay, so the first, okay, let us have first the, no, let us have first, actually the first type of chemical Reaction, wala magutang ni, is known as the combination. Oh, kaning letter A is combination reaction ni mga bata. That is, when an element combines with another element, it forms into a compound. Na? And it has a general formula of A plus B equals AB. Okay. So, to ang first type of chemical equation is the combination or the direct, na? or combination na lang, direct. Na, the direct or the combination reaction. The second one is the combustion. When you have combustion, there is a presence of oxygen. And always remember, you have only two products. That is direct dynamic product. That is carbon dioxide and water. Okay. So carbon dioxide and water. For instance, you have methane added with oxygen. Okay. You will form sato. This is a type of combustion. No? So this is a process of burning the combination of substance with oxygen to produce a flame. And that is combustion. Okay. What will happen if you are going to cook? Okay, when you open your gas, that is a methane. Methane gas. 
Pero kung di ni mo dagkutan, if there is no oxygen, what will happen? Di ko na siya musiga. Okay. So that is what that burning there is known as it will produce produce no that is the oxygen okay so you will produce carbon dioxide and water okay so how are you going to balance this as i have said sabi niya basta combustion gani no ang tanawon ra nimo ang carbon o hydrogen ni na oh carbon 1 so wala na problema ang hydrogen 2 so you add to here to make it into 4 no hydrogen here is 4 gani as add to here 2 times 2 it's 4 and the last one that you are going to balance is the oxygen. So how many oxygen here? Four, two times two, two times one, two. There is four. So O2 manisha, diba? As I have said, it's diatomic. But oxygen gani belongs to the diatomic, the seven elements, which is diatomic. So you add two to your coefficient, therefore your oxygen is two times two. There are four atoms of oxygen the equation now is balanced and that type of reaction is a combustion reaction so in balancing combustion reaction no what you are going to do as i have said is only you look into the carbon and hydrogen so uh, here what will happen that is no you have five and there is 12 so, no? 12 ang imong na hydrogen. So, you add 5 here in your carbon dioxide. You add, this is 12. There is 2. So, to make it 12, you add 6 here. Diba? O, nga na na siya. Therefore, that is 5 CO2. You add 6 here. Okay. Then, the last part that you are going to balance is the oxygen. You get now the total for your oxygen five times two ten six times one it's six no so ten no that is ten plus six sixteen so what are you going to add here it's eight to make it sixteen so the equation now is balanced and this is the combustion reaction no? so you can check it by looking into the number of atoms in each element in the reactant and in the product. Okay. No? But there are tendencies that your coefficient are fractional. For instance, here. No? Uh -huh. Pwede na po ni mo siya ing anaon. No? That one. Pwede siya fractional. Okay. It's still the same. No? You will have here still the same. Okay. If your, for instance, your carbon here is five, your hydrogen here is ten. So it is a combustion, meaning your product is carbon dioxide and water. So as I have said, ani ang imong bases. So there will be five for your carbon. There will be ten manisha. So you will add also five for hi your hydrogen. Then sum it up. That is how many for your oxygen. The last one that is five times two, 10. Five times one is five, 15. So this is now a fraction. That is 15 over two times two. So cancel the two 15. Nah? So this is a fractional coefficient. No, That is it. This not all the time, yeah, it's a whole number. There are tendencies, it has a fractional, but panagsarana siya. Na? So, this will be your na? situation. Okay, this will be your assignment. Okay, so let's move on to the stoichiometry. Na? If you talk about stoichiometry, it has something to do with na? this, will be using a quantitative relationship. What is that quantitative relationship in the reaction? It's the mole reaction, diba? I still remember the mole, 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 no? mole to mole. Okay, mole to mole reaction using the chemical equation. No? So this is now this will guide us in the 
conversion of mole to mole reaction. No? So for instance, you have, of course, it is A and B. Okay, you have the, no? you have the compound A and the compound B. Okay, so if it is in grams, convert that first into mole A. Then if you are going to convert that into mole B, all you have to do is use the balance equation. That is mole of A. No? Then how many moles in the equation? Okay, two mole of B. Okay, so we will try this in our example. No. So let us now have the mole relationship in equation. No. So for instance, this is now your chemical equation. That is two molecules of diatomic hydrogen, one molecule of oxygen. You will form two molecules of liquid water. So if you look into here, this is how many molecules of hydrogen? Two. How many molecules of oxygen? It's one. How many molecules of water? It's one. Or you can have this in a, an abbreviation of two moles of H2, one mole of O2, two moles of H2. Where is our basis? So it is really a need to balance the equation because if your equation is not balanced, what will happen is if you will have the mole to mole reaction, mole to mole relationship, what will happen is this will give you unbalanced and it will give you a wrong answer. Nah? So here it is. This is, for instance, what is given is the mass of hydrogen and what is being asked is what will be the mass of oxygen so from this equation we can get the mass of oxygen by means of mole to mole ratio which will be the equation the balance equation will be the use for the basis in the conversion of mole to mole equation okay so this is if it is given is grams, okay, diba? Please remember it. Gram to mole, how are you going to use? Use the molar mass, no? Mole to formula unit, it could be an atom, it could be a molecule, no? Use the Avogadro's number. Now, for instance, you have the mass of 0.25, what will be the mass of 0.25 mole of methane or CH4? All you have to do is that is baliho na po ni mo kanina po mole to gram okay given is mole 0.25 mole then you reverse the molar mass na look into the molar mass of carbon that is 12 hydrogen plus 4 16 therefore and one mole of methane that is equivalent to 16 grams of methane or 16 grams over one mole can tell the mole therefore there is four grams of methane. But, okay, oh, this is sit work, okay. But what will happen is if you will be using the balance equation. Mm -hmm. For instance, in this sample problem four, we have chloral hydrate, which has a formula C2H3Cl3O2, which is a drug formula used for sedative. Sedative is pang pakatulog and hyponetic. Hyponetic is hyponetized card and after what, katubo na dayon. Okay, so the first one here is calculate the molar mass of chloral hydrate. So how are you going to calculate the molar mass? That is, that is carbon is 12. Look into your periodic table. That is carbon is 12, 12 times two, hydrogen three times one, Chlorine, I think, is 35. Ang molar mass niya. 35 times 3. Oxygen, 16 times 2. Okay, Anna, that's the molar mass. No? Before you convert that one into, that's the molar mass. Letter B. The amount of moles of C2H3ClO3 molecules are in 500 grams of chloral hydrate. The letter C, what is the mass in grams of 2 times 10 to the power of 22 mole of chloral hydrate. And the last one, 
what number of chlorine atoms are in five grams of chloral hydrate. Actually, we had already calculated this sample problem no? like this in the previous lesson. No? So I will be giving another, no, another lecture with this, with the different solution. solution. Okay. I will have this, what do you call this? Uh, sample problem four in another, no, another video. So let us have now the calculation with balance, with the use of the balance equation. So the first thing that you are going to do, of course, is as I have said, you should balance the equation. Then the second one is you calculate the number of moles of each of the species in the mass given. Then use coefficient in the equa equation to convert the moles. And coefficient to gamito na the number of moles, molecules. Okay. Then calculate the mass of the desired species. Use this, no? use this diagram: gram of A to molar mass of A, then the moles of A then use the coefficient in the balance equation to get the moles of B, then molar mass of B to come up with the grams of D. Okay, here, example. How many solution? We will have this in my next video, okay? Because there is no solution here, okay? All this example. How many example there are? Seven, okay. Then let us proceed to the reaction yield, okay. So here, reaction yield is the actual yield, no? Reaction yield, the percentage yield is known as the actual yield over theoretical yield times 100. What do you mean by this, okay? Actual yield is kind of the word for instance, no? The department of agriculture says that in one hectare of a land of a rice field the minimum harvest will be 100 kabans or 100 sack of rice in one hectare no that is the theoretical yield no so pila 100 kabans no pero ang farmer dili mutu ana tenga man Kung dili ni mo maabunuhan, dili maayo ang ani. Kung kuanan og piste, pest, what will happen? Dili maayo ang ani. So, mukuha na sila og 70 sacks. And that is now the actual yield. The theoretical yield is according to the Department of Agriculture, it will be 100 kabans. So, what will be the percentage yield that is the actual, which is 70 sacks, theoretical, which is no, 100, no, 70 divided by 100 times 100%, there is only a 70% yield. No? So that is what is meant by the actual and theoretical yield. Same thing in the laboratory, it happens that way. No? So what happened is the product in the laboratory is not really as big as the theoretical no okay a minute a minute a good lang so what happened here now there is again an example for reaction yield no I think there is no solution pa. No? So as I have said, I will have another video wherein you will see the solution for this. So let us have now what is limiting reactant. No? So if you talk about limiting reactant, same thing with the actual yield and the theoretical yield. Limiting reactant is known as the reactant that is completely consumed or consumed in reaction. So, completely consumed. 
Ang excess kung na ay sobra, that is, other reactant present not completely consumed is known as excess, excess reactant. No? So before the reaction, what will happen here? Then this will be after reaction. Kung mahurot yun siya tanan, no? it is the reactant are completely consumed no? in the product. No? It is limiting reactant. If there is a remaining, is known as an excess. No? So for instance, here you have a formula. We have a, an equation of H2, two molecules of hydrogen, one molecule of oxygen to form water. Here, that one. Can you share before reaction? Then what will happen is after reaction. Makit anin nyo nga na ay excess na sobra nga oxygen. Na? Igo ragyod ang hydrogen. Na consume ang hydrogen. So that is what is meant by limiting an excess. Limiting reactant is hydrogen molecule because it is completely the completely uh, used up na, consumed na, while there is a remaining na, oxy, uh, oxygen molecule so it is excess reagent na. so how are we going to get the limiting reactant na? how will we know which is the limiting and the excess reactant na? What happened here is in a given formula, in a given, in a given uh, problem, there will be a given two masses, that is mass A and mass B of the reactant. No? So, imo na siyang isob sa duha. No? For instance, no? you get the mass of A. No? So, moles of, how are you going to get the product of this, no, the mass of the product, no, you will be given a mass of the reactant. reactant. No, for instance, kani, na kani, na ay mass reactant aning yang gihatag. For instance, 5 grams. Kani po, 5 grams of hydrogen. Then this one is 2 grams of oxygen. Okay. What you're going to do is, which will be the limiting reactant, you will solve now using your product okay you solve now na, calculate the product that is the mass of water using the given five grams of hydrogen mandayon you use again solve for the mass of water na, using again the mass given of oxygen tan aon dayon ni mo asa ang dako ang dako is the excess ah using mass b in the reactant it dako man siya so it is excess reactant katong gamay ra is the limiting reactant that is how it is being done no so here is an example again there is no solution so don't worry, I will have solution for this. Okay. No? So how are we going to calculate the empirical formula? Okay. So empirical formula is known as the simplest whole number ratio. While the molecular formula is the exact. Ang tinood yung formula is the molecular formula. Okay. So for instance, hydrogen. No? Hydrogen peroxide, it has a molecular formula of H2O2. But this is divisible by 2. So divide this by 2. H, uh, 2 divided by 2, 1. Oxygen, 2 divided by 2, 1. Therefore, you will have an empirical formula of HO. Then for water, so it's not divisible. It's still the same. Therefore, the empirical formula is H2. For glucose, this is divisible by Six, diba? So six divided by six, one. Twelve divided by six, two. Oxygen divided by six, one. Therefore, your empirical formula is C1H2O1. Okay. Or O, no? Oxalic acid, this is divisible by two. Therefore, that is H1, C1, or HCO2. Okay. For an ethanol, this is 
not divisible. It's still the same, that is C2H6O. This one is thing that is divisible by two, therefore the C1H3. Then for ethylene, that, that is divisible by two, that is CH2. For caffeine, oh, that is divisible by two, therefore C4, H5, N2, O. Okay, so that is what is meant by empirical formula. The simplest form of formula is the empirical formula, but that is not the exact and the true formula. The true formula is the molecular formula. So how are we going to determine this? Okay, here is an example, no? Okay, again, we will be using another sample for this, no? For the calculation of the molecular formula, no? So the technique for determining the empirical formula in laboratory, it's different, no? This is commonly used using by heating. No? We have it heating, it heat not to Nishia using the fornace. Fornace is a kind of an oven with a very high temperature. So for instance, you have here, the sample is being placed in the fornace, then you have no, in the fornace, there is a water absorber at the same time, carbon dioxide absorber. No? So you will know how much is gained with the carbon dioxide and the water. No? Again, we will have sample problem of this. No? Okay, so that ends our no, lecture for this. These are just part one. We will have all the problem part in the part two. Thank you for listening and good.